Hello, MBL fans, and welcome to an exclusive interview with a surprise guest. I am your host, Nick Arise Hunter, and joining me today, longtime league veteran, the Nets' very own, John Doyen. Long time coming to get you on here, John. How you feeling, man? Hey, Nick. I'm pretty, feeling pretty good, man. I'm super happy to be on the podcast. It's something that I've been kind of following for a while, and I, I love that it's something that you've taken on as, a, as an assistant commissioner, man. Yeah, definitely. This podcast is a really awesome avenue for me to just like connect with guys like you, uh, you know, network out there with all the different uh, people in this huge community that we're, we're building every day. So definitely a huge, uh, hugely fun endeavor for me to do each and every week. Um, but diving, diving right in here, John, I was hoping you could maybe talk a little bit about like when you came up in terms of basketball in your community, like how did the game of basketball become a part of your life? Um, well, for me, uh, Nick, I, I, I grew up in the Lawrence community, so like the Fairfield area. Um, you know, there's, my Bulldogs don't get a lot of love from, from a lot of the area <laughs> schools, but uh, we're definitely a certain type of breed, you know. Um, Absolutely. And, and, and that's, kind of, that's kind of taught from an early age. At least it was for me when I was growing up because if any guys know about Lawrence basketball, they know Coach Mike McGee, and he's literally a legend in this area. Um, he's actually in the New England sport, uh, New England Basketball Hall of Fame and the Maine Basketball Hall of Fame for any of you history buffs, basketball buffs out there. Yeah, that's a combo um, of accolades right there. Damn. But yeah, just kind of coming up in that umbrella of, of basketball and the way things are taught there, um, you can see it throughout the league too. There's a lot of guys there in the league that, you know, went to Lawrence from Lawrence, you know, Josh Berard, Lawrence guy. And it's just kind of something that's, you know, you're expected to play tough defense and you're always expected to kind of know your role, whether it be, you know, you know, hey, hey on this on this team, you might be the guy, but with this team, you might just kind of be like a role player, you know, and it, it, the ability to kind of accept those roles is huge in, in that culture that we're brought up in. Definitely, definitely. And, and you talked a little bit about Coach McGee over there. Um, and, and another guy from Lawrence that jumps out, Kobe Neto, am I correct in saying that? Yeah, The kid absolutely. from the Kobe Nets Nader, as well? Yeah, I actually, uh, believe it or not, um, I was on the coaching staff uh, Kobe's senior year at Lawrence when we went to the state championship uh, against Holy Greeley. Cow. Holy cow, how about that, though? That's And then to play with him just just after that, he's still yeah, a young and you're one of the later, veterans. So, I mean... I'd, I'd say that we, uh, we we mesh we mesh well because I mean, even though Coach McGee is not there, they got uh, Coach Peller in the, is there, and he's a he's a Lawrence guy. He played for Coach McGee, so it's kind of the same, the same theme um, w with him, and that that's how things were when I was part of the staff. So I mean, he he, he knows what I expect out of him on the floor um, when we're out there together, and. Um, I'd, I'd say he's doing pretty pretty damn good for a, for a first year guy, honestly. Oh yeah, he's playing great with you guys. He's he's opened up the floor tremendously for your guys' team. Absolutely, he's 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 a great guy that we can kind of lean on. Um, you know, when when Curtis is getting you know covered up, when when Berard's feeling a little bit of extra pressure in the backcourt, um, he's just the kind of guy that can take over and bring the ball out for us, score if he needs to. Um, and just kind of, you know, take over whatever responsibilities we need that on that particular week, you know? Yeah, and he's he's unafraid to to go at some of these veterans, which is I love to see. Um, yeah, that that's that's the Lawrence in him, man. He's yeah. he's a pit bull. He's a dog. Absolutely. So we we talked about Coach McGee, like I said. Are there any other like influential, like whether it be like former pros that you might have had a poster on your wall of, like other coaches, peers, teammates, any guys like that who influenced your game? Um, I would definitely say, like, I mean, as far as pros go, obviously, I mean, we we anybody that grew up in my time frame, my my era. You know, everybody, when you, when you take that piece of paper and you throw it in the trash can, everybody yells Kobe. Nobody ever, you don't yell MJ. <laughs> it's, Kobe. it's Kobe. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, Kobe, Kobe is obviously a huge influence. Um, R.I.P. Um, yeah, absolutely. R.I.P. to a great one. Um, and, you know, kind of to sprout off of him, I feel like the biggest part of Kobe's game was that I've always paid attention to was his footwork. 
and I've always kind of prided myself on being a you know a bigger guy that's got good footwork. So seeing his footwork and how he learned things from Hakeem, so that another another great um, one of got one of the guys that I always try to pick up moves from. Uh, the little, you know, the dream shake. Uh, I always tried to practice that one in in practice when I was in high school and, and do stuff like that. And then, like, after that, honestly, one of my teammate, Josh Berard, he was a Lawrence guy. I remember watching him play growing up. Um, he's a little bit older than me, but I remember watching him grow up um, and, and, and play at Lawrence and play for a state championship against Portland and – uh, another league, another guy in the league, Travis Dorsey. Um, I remember watching him play uh, when I was growing up. He was older than me, so I got a lot of I got a lot of influences um, throughout. Whether it be pros, coaches, guys I even play with, um, I've picked up things from Isaiah Brathway. Uh, I've picked up things from Kanji. Um, wow, so even within our own league, you've had people yeah, that have come in that you've own, met. Yeah, absolutely. Even game. within our own league, I've picked up little things. Um, Ricky, I've picked up things from Ricky over the years that, you know, um, as I've gotten older, I've been like, oh, you know, like, Ricky does this and it works really well. And, like, obviously, you know, once you get older, you got to kind of figure out the little tricks of the trade to, you know. To survive out there. Rebound or, you know, do what it is you need to do. And yeah. He, he's a great one to learn from, man. He, he's been around the game for a really long time. Definitely. Um, we talk about, um, you, you mentioned Kobe and you mentioned Berard. Now, me and Berard have this longstanding joke where anytime you're, you're about to play in a game, we joke about the percentage that you'll do a drop step in the paint. And Josh always says it's a 100% chance. So that's <laughs> funny. It's like one of there's few iconic moves that you could say like this guy does this move in the NBL like specifically, but definitely the John Doyen drop step is at the top of the list. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, I, I really try. <laughs> it's so funny that he says that. You guys got that bet. Yeah. I um, it's just that was one of the most basic moves that that I learned growing up, you know, and I I just kind of tried to perfect it the best I possibly can. Um, I mean, I've picked up that nice spin move to the baseline too. Uh, mm-hmm. That's that one. That's when when guys really lean on me. I, I like to go to that spin move to the baseline. But the drop step, man, it's just so basic. You know, drop step middle, drop step to the baseline. Either go go hook to the middle, or or you know finish with your outside hand on on you know the left side, or your right hand on your right side. But it's just simple moves, man. It. I feel like sometimes people make basketball more difficult than what it's got to be. And um, just fundamentally, I've always tried to be sound. You know what I mean? You know, that's a perfect transition. Like, how would you describe your game? I would say pretty fundamental, man. Um, I'm pretty basic. Like, I I pick and choose my spots. Um, you know, there's obvious, there's been, and there's been obvious times where in the league, um, I've, I've gone off a few times here and there. Absolutely, um, and, man. Absolutely. I've yeah, there's just, been, you know, it's, it's, I'm not, I'm not a Ryan Martin or, you know, or, uh, you know, or, uh, the Roseby or, you know, John Benjamin. I'm not one of those guys that's going to come out there and, and give you, you know, anywhere between 20 to 30 on a, on a, in an NBL game. I'm just not one of those guys. Like I I don't, I've never been a person that has to, uh, that had to take that many shots. You know what I mean? To score that many points. I'm fine with taking, you know, anywhere between eight to 10 shots. And I mean, uh, I didn't even know the other night I was, I was two assists shy of my first triple double. Yeah, I, I tried. I tried to let you know, but <laughs> I, you know, you know how it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't even know until you said something to me. So, like, uh, I mean, I think that numbers like that speak for itself. Like, I just try to be the best all around ball player that I can be, and just play smart, limit turnovers, and do whatever it is that my team needs me to do in order to win a game. Because in the end, at the end of the day, I don't care if I dropped thirty or if I dropped six. 
I just want a dub. That's all I want. Exactly, exactly. And like, and I'm looking at your career um, spread, like your career stats in the NBL. And I would say, like, like you said, like you're not one of those guys um, that's going to go out there and drop 40 on 100 shots. But like, I'm looking at you here, and I'm looking at the 123 games played, which is at least top three, if not top two, all time. And then I'm looking yeah. at the over 1,000 points, nine points away from 1,200. I'm looking at the over 200 assists. I'm looking at the nearly 600 rebounds, over 60 steals. Um, and, and that's just, to me, screams Mr. Steady across the board. And, and not only all that, but talk to me about the mental game, uh, the mental aspect of your game. It's funny that you actually mentioned that, Nick, because I think you might have picked up on, I, th- I was having this conversation with Barad after our game, and, um, you know, uh, Jordan Holmes said, came up to me after the game, and he was like, Dwayne, he goes, why are you going to talk so much shit? <laughs> and I just kind of laughed, I just kind of la- laughed, and That's right. afterwards, uh, I said to Barad, I'm like, I mean, you know me, like, it's all, it's all in fun, and I actually, I had the same conversation with Garrett Clemmer during our game a couple weeks ago like because I was kind of I was chirping at Garrett a little bit and we were at the foul line and I was standing there and I just kind of nudged him a little bit and I was like you know it's all in fun right and he's like yeah man I I know that mm-hmm. and so like that's all it is like it's just for me it's a mental thing like I'm trying to I'm trying to hype myself up um and you know get myself in a position where I can get that little bit of an edge over you and if that means chirping and talking a little bit of smack to try and get you irritated or upset so that you take a bad shot or you foul me or you know wh- whatever it may be i'm going to i'm going to take that advantage and, and i'm going to i'm going to use it you know right and as is the case with with all the things that you can point to about you and about yourself i would say most likely um that's the lawrence in you Oh, yeah, without a doubt, that's definitely the Lawrence in me. Like, if there's one thing that you learn to do and to do well, Lawrence, is to t- t- talk smack, so. 100%, 100%. Um, obviously, like, I just pointed to those stats. I, I, I mentioned, cited the over 120 games played. Um, now, obviously, you're one of the longtime veterans in our league and in our community. One of the originals, man. One of the originals and on, on a number of iconic teams, too. Um, what keeps you coming back? The competition, man. Um, and I love, I love with the direction that the league has gone. Like, I, I, I saw when, when the league started, I saw, I, f- I first saw this happening the way that the league is now and having an East and a West. And having two different, you know, two different conferences, having interleague play, and all that stuff. Like I, I saw that happening, and I just knew it was a matter of time. And I love, I love it for the league, and I love it for like all these guys that that keep coming back, like myself, because it just, you know, we're all competitive guys, man. Like we all, we all played on some sport, sort of athletic team when we were in high school with with all of our buddies, all of our best friends, and you know we all graduated got older became adults this is our way to to relive that those glory days all over again and you know just to to be competitive and and i think that's i think it's great for the league i i think you're right and i think like you said one of the originals i think you are integral on on that progress and in that identity of of just who we all who we are you know as the nbl um, and long before even I was around, you know, I do a lot for the league and, and you know, people recognize that, but you know, Absolutely, who re- you, the guys who, a lot for the league and, and we really appreciate what you do for the league. Well, I, I, I thank you in saying that, but, but what I'm trying to say here is that like, uh, it's, it's, it's that those guys like you, Berard, uh, Dorsey, Ray, obviously, like those are the guys who really built this community, who really cultivated it. And the guys who, who who it's all you know like founded upon um without you yeah, guys absolutely. none of this exists none of this happens you know so that's what i always preach all day long no no it's great because i mean within the league we have so many i mean a lot of us are all a lot of us are dads you know what i mean we're family men we're married have kids uh some of us some of us are business owners um you know 
we got Curtis who owns Miller Fitness all over the state of Maine almost. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, you know, we got other guys that own construction companies. You know, we got other guys that do self-employed and, and do, you know, all kinds of different stuff. All walks of life. And then life. we got guys in the league that are coaches, coaches in, in Central Maine. At, at You know, we got Sam Smith coaching at Waterville High School. And uh, Murray's a part of his staff, I believe. Pila, uh, Pila was at the Co- at Kobe College, part of their staff at one point in time. So yep. like Ryan Martin, of, head coach of Lake Region. Well, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of great basketball uh, minds in this league that uh, that are out there doing great things in the community. Definitely. Um, and and in terms of some of those some of those guys out there in the league, let's hone it in on your team, your current team, the Nets. Um, what, 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 run, run, baby. Oh my gosh. You guys have, are six and five and are, uh, six and oh, in your last six games. Like, holy, yeah. holy cow. Six game streak. Started at the bottom. Now we're here, right? Like Drake type. Absolutely. <laughs> Talk to me about the Nets, man. The Nets, we're, we're an interesting squad, honestly. Um, I think that when, when the year started and we started out, uh, what was it? Oh, and four. We started out and oh and five, um, yeah, oh and five. Started out oh and five. I think a lot of people just kind of probably wrote us off and were like, "Yeah, they don't know what they're doing." Myself but, included. Um, myself included. <laughs> what was that? I said myself included. Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm sure <laughs> you were. I wouldn't have blamed you if I were you sitting there watching us play every week for five games straight and looking the way that we did. I'd be like, yeah, these guys are done. But they were never, they were all close games. It was all second half. It was all yeah. second half. And, and then you guys just started to figure it out. And honestly, I, I, I kind of want to say, I'm not trying to attribute it to myself, but I'm kind of trying to attribute it to the the, the pickup in my, my smack talk, especially maybe in the <laughs> second half of games. Dude, you've been um, playing well, John. You've been playing uh, well. I've been trying to kind of turn because that was our issue, honestly, during that five game. You can tell, you can say, because you know this is true. What would happen is, is we we would go on these huge runs and we'd do great, and we'd be up maybe ten or fifteen or something like that at halftime. Come out of halftime, the other team would smack us in the mouth, and then all of a sudden we're in a game, and it comes down to a couple possessions. And we're just not, we just like either weren't making plays to get buckets to keep ourselves ahead or we weren't honed in defensively and we were losing those games. Like we just weren't locked in. And what I've been trying to do over these last couple of weeks is just kind of like, I mean, you can look, you, you know, our roster, anybody can look at our roster and be like, all right, who's going to be, you know, I think every team kind of needs a vocal leader no matter what. So, like, you can kind of look, uh, other than obvious, your, our obvious captain, Berard, obviously he's going to be vocal, but, like, who's kind of going to be the hype guy out there? Like, you know, try to boost the, the Izzy, you know what I mean? Right, when right, Izzy right. Start, when Izzy starts getting hyped up and starts getting all rowdy, his teammates start to play better around him. 100%. And I figured, who's going to start doing that? I got to start doing that. And... It's been working. Curtis has been out there killing teams. Hooking. Kobe's been out. Kobe's been out there busting the commissioner's ankles. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> like, Dude, he really got him though. He really got him. Yeah, I, I, I've never. I've seen some dudes get busted before, but uh, that was hands down probably one of the worst ones. I'm sorry, Ray. <laughs> I hope I don't get fined by the league because of this. <laughs> No, that he he laughs at it. <laughs> he's um, you know he's and earned it. I mean, even though Berard's not putting up those massive Berard numbers like like he he did when we started this this whole thing, um, like he's still I I think he had like twenty four the other night when we were missing Carson. Yep. So like he steps in when he needs to and takes more shots when he needs to, but he's been a great facilitator. He's been amazing on defense. Um, he's a tear when he's on ball. Um, That's so and true. I just, like, our, our, def- our defense, our, our collective defense, I think has picked it up a notch over the last few weeks. And that's kind of been our, our motto is the shots are going to fall, but we can play defense the whole game. Like we got to play defense the whole game. 
Exactly, exactly. And and I, I think, like, everyone will point to, when it comes to Josh, like, everyone will point to the three-point shot. Uh, but But there's so many other things in his game that, like, just change Absolutely. change everything on the floor. His passing ability is is something you have to pick up and be mindful of at the full court level. Like, uh, and that's just one thing. Like you said, his on ball defense, um, you know, just all around IQ. And then when when the when the whistle's blown and everyone's on the side, he's always screaming. He's always yelling, uh, you know, on everyone uh, just for everyone to play better. So he's competitive as well. I think you guys always uh, push each other to be better when you're on the same team. Oh yeah, dude. That's that's my guy. Berard's my guy. Like, uh, he was actually um, he was my AAU coach for back when they used to have main tide back Holy in this cow. era. Um, that goes way back, huh? Yeah, that goes way back. It, that was actually <laughs> that was a, that was a nice team because we were all freshmen in high school. That was like that was made up of like me, Curtis Bixby, Jay Dangler, Eric Taylor was on that team. Yeah, we were we were loaded. A whole bunch of Central Maine kids. John, John. So, so uh, Josh will always talk about this team, this this team called the Blackout Team or whatever. Team Blackout. Uh, team Blackout. So, so you've been around a long time. You've been on some on some crazy teams, as well as Team Blackout. Talk to me a little bit about like some of those iconic teams to you that you've been on, like championship teams, bla- team blackout, yeah. whatever it is, you know. Well, team, here, this is a story. I, probably a lot of people know this, but <laughs> team blackout was when the f- league first started. Berard was the captain, um, one of the original captains of the original. Uh, we only had six teams at that point in time, I believe. Yep. Um. But we're going uh, way back here, folks. We, yeah, we, 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 we liked, we liked to partake in alcoholic beverages <laughs> at the bars the night before. Right, right, um, right. And some nights would last very long, and we would end up showing back up to the game, showing up to our game because the games were early in the morning. At like first game was at eight, I think. Um, back when had, we did the most mornings, of, yeah. Most of, most of the time, we hadn't even gone to sleep yet from the night before. So we were still in rough shape from the night before because we hadn't gone to bed. Um, so that's team that that's team blackout and how they were they were brought up brought up. But other than that, I would say some of the best teams that I've played on in this league. Unfortunately, I I'm still chasing that ever elusive championship. No way, really? Yeah, yeah. I've never. If if you go back and look in the, I didn't know that. Book, your boy has never won an NBL championship. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, I'm like Carmelo, man. <laughs> just, you really just are. Chasing, just chasing it. Um, I think you're gonna get it. No, I, I played on some great teams. I played in the championship. In the championship. Um, I actually was on, I was on the Hornets team that played the Bucks in the championship at Gilman Street, yep. but I wasn't able to be there for that game and I missed it. So yeah, that's right. And they lost by six. So I'm going to say they lost because I wasn't there. Yeah. You were, I mean, you were averaging more than six points that season. So it stands by yeah. reason. Yeah, I would I would say that we probably would have won that game. That was uh, I, I believe that was me, uh, Izzy, uh, Murray, Withy. Uh, oh yeah, that's that, a that, that that's was, a deadly that, team. That was, a, that was a nice squad. That was a very nice squad, on, especially on that court. That oh, court yeah. played to our strengths very much. Definitely, um, Great. that Buck squad was good too. Uh, you know, the like, Buck squad was very good. That Buck squad had uh, your brother on it. Yeah, Ray um, Norris, Ray, Ryan Bullard, country. On. Um, Tim McCarthy was on that team. There, there was that was that was a really good team too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that Hornets team was a great team that I played on. Um, I, I I'll always love that very first team that I played on with uh, the Bulls with Berard and uh, and Brooks Spalding, mm-hmm. um, and, and my brother and a couple other guys. Um, I played on a, a really good Magic team with. Uh, Nate Carson and Izzy, and we didn't win the championship. That's crazy. That. That's crazy. Yeah, you'd never be able to imagine that a team with just those three. And actually, and you add a uh, 
you add Eric Lopez into the mix too. Yeah. Who was an absolute sharpshooter. So um, I've been on some pretty good teams and I, I've, I'm still chasing that shit, man. You're going to get it. I have a feeling. And I'm pretty sure um, Josh is in the same boat. I'm pretty sure Josh is also never won. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure. I think we're, I think we're in this, we're rolling the same boat, man. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see if you guys will do it together. If you guys will do it separate, but I, I'm hoping that you both do get to, uh, to pull one, pull one home. Um, so we talked a lot just now about like the the guys and the teams that you've played with. What about some of the players that you haven't played with? Like, who is one player you've never played on the same team as in the league that you'd like to play as? Ooh. That's a tough one. Um, I love to play beside Ricky sometime. Ooh, that'd be a I'd lot of fun. Play, I, I'd, I'd love to play beside Ricky sometime. I think that that would be some somebody that would be fun for me to play again, play with. Actually, another person that I, I can't believe I've never played with is I've never played with Dorsey either. I feel like that's another another big guy that I'd love to play with because I feel like we'd be able to really play well off of each other. Plus, he's a Lawrence guy, so that's yeah. always nice. So basically, like you, you, you're saying you want to create the NBL's most deadly front court. Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying <laughs> to create the best four or five tandem ever ever seen. That's awesome. That's awesome. Speaking of speaking of the best ever seen. This is my personal favorite question, and I ask everyone that I interview this question. Who, and, and you can take as long as you want. This is this is a big one. Who Who all is right. your all-time, I'm talking all-time main basketball league, uh, top five, and you can throw in a six-man as well. So six guys. Ooh. Point guard through center with a six-man. Who, who do you take? NBL all-time, top five. It was a six man you said. Yep. All right. Um, I'm going to be biased. I'm going to put my boy Berard at the one. Okay. I, I saw that one coming. Yep. I'm going to put Berard at the one. I'm going to put... Let's see. I think I'm going to put Conch at the two. Ooh. Yeah, you got to put the... I mean, Conch... Say what you want about Conj, but the dude gets buckets. I say, you know what I have to say about Conj? I say, What's that? I say, assist me! Assist me! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so you got Josh and you got Mike. So I, got, I, got, I got Josh, I got Mike. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put Izzy at the three. Okay, okay. And then, honestly, I'm thinking about going with a big front court. And I'm gonna put Dorsey at the four, and I'm gonna put Ricky at the five. Wow! And then I'm and then I'm gonna play six man so that I can come off the bench. And I think if that team is ever assembled, there's your title right there, bud. Yeah, absolutely. If we don't win a title, then uh, you gotta sell the team after that. Yeah, absolutely. I think you'd all be forced to retire. We'd have a nice Hall of Fame induction, but then you guys would never want to show your faces again. <laughs> No, that's a great team. Nobody's beaten that team in this league. I can tell you that. Oh no, I, I don't. I don't think so. With uh, I mean, of course, of course, you're gonna get your offense from from Barrar. You're gonna get offense from everybody, honestly. But the big thing with that team is just the length and the defense. Honestly, the length and the defense of that team would be absolutely ridiculous, and the IQ is through the roof. So. For sure, and and everyone can make things happen. Like that'd just be crazy, and that's why I love that question so much. Is because like if you you just imagine some of these like super teams essentially in the framework of our league, and it's like it could almost never happen just because it's so much talent. Like yeah, like but it's just it's fun to think about, you know. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like we've we, I feel like we've seen some some um, I don't know some pretty good like big th- some big threes within the league over the last over the last couple of leagues with the way that the league is now you know what i mean especially I, I unfortunately i need to i don't follow the west as much as i do the east because i yeah. play in the east makes sense and those are the guys and those are the guys that i play against on a regular basis but like <clears throat> i mean i know in, in the east there's been some pretty big 
I mean, what they we, we've had I, before we had the two conferences. I think we had uh, um, Conj and um, and Ty and that that Clippers team that won it all when we were playing at at Meso. Oh yeah. That team was, yeah, that team was stacked. That was a huge big three. They had, I can't I can't remember who the third person. Oh was yeah, they had they head. had they had Akanji. They had. Trey Butler, they had Trey. Ty Nixon, they had yeah. Devin Begin. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, they had a nice Isaiah they had, Isaiah, they had Isaiah McGee. Nice squad. And and yeah, yeah, and Adi was on that team. Yeah, Adi was on that team. Rydell was on that team. Rydell, uh, Jordan Lyford, I think, was the last guy. Yeah, there's there's that team was pretty stacked, honestly. Like if if you really look at all those guys game like the, those game their game and the way that they play and what they bring to the table, like you're not losing anything when a guy comes off the bench, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um one of the recent big threes that comes to mind is, is the the current reigning champion. We're talking Cam Miller, Mike Akanji, and John Benjamin on the same damn team. Yeah. You kidding Absolute, me? Yeah. You kidding that, me? That's nuts. With Mitch out on the wing, ready to sink every three that gets sent over to him, like jeez. Yeah, I, I honestly, I really did enjoy that team that I played with last season, uh, this past fall. With uh, it was me, Garrett Clemmer, the Wizards, uh, Ray. Yeah, that Wizards team. Van Van Brass. Brass. Yeah, um, that was that was a really fun squad to play with. Yeah, that that team was. I thought that team could could go all the way. Yeah, that that team was a, a fun team to play with, and uh, that was actually my first time playing with with the Kamish, and yep. it, it was enjoyable because uh, Ray has a very very high basketball IQ, and those are the type of guys that I like to play with. That he, yeah, definitely. Ray has an, a high IQ in most regards, but definitely within uh, the conversation of basketball as well. Um, speaking of that, let's talk about overall basketball a little bit outside of our league. I got a couple more things here before here for you uh, before we wrap up. Wrap up, excuse me. Um, but the goat debate. What's your take on uh, the goat debate? The goat debate. So I'm assuming it's between MJ and LeBron. If if you're, is that your goat debate? Well, we we threw we threw Kobe around earlier. So I mean, what what do you yeah. got to say about it? I I will I will say I always will preach Michael Jordan. No matter no matter what, till the end of time, until I see something else. You know that amazes me as much as he has amazed me. Um, what, See, what's it's your tough take? for me. It's tough for me, Nick, because like, all right. So I was born in '88. So like my, I I remember some a little bit of seeing Michael Jordan when I was when I was young at a young age, but one thing that I I've always brought up about LeBron is the fact that. This kid was literally in the spotlight from the age of like seventeen years old, like, and and he's been in the spotlight ever since then. He hasn't that we know of. He hasn't done anything wrong. You never found out that he like uh, sexually assaulted somebody or was gambling or right. doing anything like that. And I'm sure that people dug. I'm sure that people have tried to find as much dirt as they possibly could on the guy. Right. I mean, they they still figured out how to do it to Jordan. They figured out that he was he was gambling, and and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So like, um, it's just really tough because they just both bring something so much different to the table. Like, I'm sure that if you ask LeBron if he has the killer mentality, he says yes. And we've obviously seen that before when he you know he's dropped fifty in a finals game or dropped 45 in three straight finals games. But, like, I feel like MJ is just, like, I feel like you compare MJ and Kobe to each other and you compare LeBron and Magic to each other because LeBron does more um, facilitating than I've ever seen MJ ever do. Yeah. So, it's just tough for me, man. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have an answer. If that's an answer, I really don't. No, that's okay. They're just, they're just so, they're both great in their own aspects. Right, right. Like an apple is great to eat. So is an orange, you know, like. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no better way to explain it than that. 
And, and I think, like, if you're talking, if you're a coach, like, if you're a head coach in the NBA, if you're Steve Kerr, um, you're taking you're taking a guy like Michael Jordan. You're taking a guy like Kobe. That's the guy you want. But if you're a front office, you're taking LeBron. You know, yeah. You, you, that's the guy you want because of all those yeah. things you cited because of his his basically perfect record of citizenship, what he brings to a community. You know, all those different things outside of basketball. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. Because if you ask me, I mean, ask me as a coach, without a doubt, I'm taking MJ. I'm taking Kobe every single time because you need a winner. You, you, you need a winner, and you need that guy out on the floor that 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 extension of you, that that right hand for you. You know what right, I mean? Right. Every single team needs a leader on the floor. Like the coach can't be out there, you know, trying to get everybody to huddle up to make sure that you're you're running the right defensive scheme or that you know that you're trying to force this guy to the baseline or to a trap or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't do that every second of every game. And those coaches out there in the league that are listening to this podcast, if Sam's listening, he knows that. Uh, Coach Dangler, he knows that. Um, All those coaches, you know, they they know that you need somebody to be a leader out there on the floor. And if you're looking for somebody, I feel like it's MJ. Definitely. Um, Let's transition away from the GOAT debate. I'm, I'm what we're going to do here because we're getting toward the end um, we're going to do something just a basic lightning round so this is going to be a little bit fun so Ooh. essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw out the name of someone you may or hopefully you will know in terms of uh, it'll most likely be an MBL guy but maybe I'll throw out some different names here um, and then you'll just say a word that comes to your mind okay okay all, all right. right so first one John Doyen uh, I don't know, man. Can I skip? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, skip is fine. I don't know what to say about myself. I mean, I mean, uh, if you ask me a word about myself, I would say handsome. I would say <laughs> no, no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, let's move on. Okay, uh, Izzy. Uh, tenacious, man. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Dorsey. Dorsey, uh, fundamental. Okay, what about Tyler Harvey? Quag, ooh, Quag. Um, man, he's a he's a, he's a he's a dog, man. I love him out on the floor. He's a dog. Absolutely, a dog. I like that one for him. Uh, Dion Senior. Dion. Uh, legend, honestly. Legend. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is a guy you've guarded plenty. How about uh, Sean Spadea? Oh, Spadea. Um, <laughs> uh, I would say. I would say I'd say wise. I would honestly I've learned a lot from Spadeo over, over the years. To tell you the truth. Wise, wise. I like yeah, that one for wise. him. Wise. Okay, okay. What about Ray Bernier? Ray. Ooh. Um. Ankles. <laughs> ankles. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Too soon, man. <laughs> Too soon. Okay. Okay. Uh. Uh. Carlos Gonzalez. Oh, uh, dude's a monster. Dude's an absolute monster. Yep. Okay. Um, let's see. A couple more here. A couple more. Uh, <laughs> Tyler Mitchell. <laughs> Lovey? Oh, man. <laughs> Blind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Uh, um, okay, okay. Let's do two more. Let's do two more. Um, uh, Brian Bellows. Bellows. <laughs> Uh, I love Bellows. As as many as many verbal altercations that we get into, <laughs> I love it because he's uh, he's I love it because he's a competitor just like I am. So I'm just gonna he's a mouthpiece just like me. <laughs> and that's I, I was thinking that, that's, um, that, that's what I should have said for myself when you asked me about myself. Mouthpiece. I said mouthpiece. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That fits. Sure. Um, and and uh, before we I say my last one here. Uh, Teammates, I'd love to see uh, in the NBL as would be you and Brian. That'd be great. 
<laughs> Honestly, uh, I don't think that we've ever played together uh, in the NBL. We have played together in flag football, though. Oh, that that's right. Pro. Shit, we've played together in flag football. Yeah. Um, okay, Jordan. okay. Last last name here. Uh, Jordan DeRoseby. DeRose Shifty. Shifty, yep. All right, so that'll complete our lightning round. And, and before before we wrap up, was there anything you wanted to, to talk about before I had uh, my final question for you? No, I don't think so, man. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to have been able to, to do this with you. And I hope to see more guys kind of take advantage of it to see where this, this thing kind of goes. Because I think the league's heading in a really awesome direction. I agree with you, man. I, I, I love doing these interviews. I think it's a ton of fun. It brings a smile to my face every time. Um, and it just shows, like, what the league has to offer in terms of, like, just offering a, a place for somebody, uh, you know, like a community for someone to be a part of like no other. And, and I think we really we really have that on lock, um, you know, what we've built and, and all that. So, um, you know. Um, but, yeah, my, my final question for you, John, is, uh, and I like to, to connect this to the community aspect here. Uh, for any of the younger viewers, for any of the, the kids that come through the circuit that you might coach or that you, uh, that you might run into, is there any advice that you're willing to pass along in terms of like, it can be basketball related or not. It could be, you know, just about life in general. Uh, wise words from John Doyen, if you would. Um, I would say... Uh listen listen to the people that are close to you um block out block out anybody outside of your your inner circle um and and that's like kind of personal advice as far as uh like coaching advice i would say listen to your coaches man like believe it or not those guys want to want to see you succeed and be you the see you be the best the best basketball player, football player, golf, tennis, hockey, whatever it is, um, the, whatever sports you partake in, um, listen to your coaches because they want to see you succeed, not only in that particular sport, but in life as well. Um, you know, these, these coaches are underpaid. They're taking time uh, from their own families to be with, you know, their basketball family for two, three, four months out of the year. And if you're talking college coaches, they're doing it pretty much almost all year round when it comes to recruiting and stuff. So um, listen to your coaches because they definitely want to see you succeed and, and be the best ball player that you can possibly be and put you in, in situations where you're going to succeed because they definitely don't want to see you fail. Definitely, man. Definitely. Word, word to the wise from Mr. John Doyen. And John, I just want to take a moment um, I like to do this as much as possible, but and for anyone listening right now, like John, John is truly, truly one of the originals of the Maine Basketball League. Long before I was around, years before I was around, this guy was hooping with this league, was, uh, you know, founding uh, the identity of this community. Um, and, and so I just wanted to give you praise, do praise for what you've had a hand in creating in the main basketball league to thank you for all the contributions and, and all those that will come in the future and to thank you, especially for your time today. Uh, I can't wait to see what, what the remainder of the season will be for you and for that Nets team. If you guys uh, continue to stretch this winning streak, maybe even, uh, consider, uh, uh, picking up your first championship, maybe who knows, That'd be um, nice. But, but I, I thank you again, John, for your time today. We're going to go ahead and end the program. I thank everyone for viewing. Uh, you'll be able to catch uh, Maine Basketball League every Sunday and every Monday for the remainder of the season. Um, and every Friday, we are live on Facebook and Instagram. Um, John, anything else you want to say before we cut it? Go Nets. <laughs> go Nets. All right. Uh, that's all for today, folks. I wish you all the best, and thank you for tuning in.